Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been swell. Can I say swell instead of well? I'm not sure. If I forget to say I hope you've been well, then I hear about it in the comments. But then I also hear in the comments that people are tired of me hoping that they've been well. So I can't really win there. Today we're talking about EDC or everyday carry. Sorry if the title offended you. This can totally be a woman's EDC or a young adults EDC or whatever, but I titled it a man's EDC because I believe you should carry stuff every day that A, as a man, you should be able to protect yourself and your loved ones. So I carry a firearm. You should be able to provide for your loved ones and you can provide light via a flashlight, maybe. And then I also just personally, I believe guys should be able to fix things and build things. So I carry a multi-tool every day and that's kind of like the core of my EDC. So we're gonna get into the items specifically that I carry every day. Towards the end of the video, I'm gonna kind of talk about some stuff that I cycle in here and there that I don't necessarily carry every day. But a lot of times I do carry like one variant of that. So stick around to the end for kind of some bonus EDC stuff. So let's start with the core of my EDC. I carry a Magpul DACA can in my back pocket. No, I don't actually carry it, but I just got these in the mail. And I don't know, I'm kind of a gear junkie. I just think these things are so cool. They come, if you get Magpul sunglasses, you get a black one, but now they just started selling all the colors. And just, I was curious what you could fit in one of these. So I put all my EDC items in this. I really keep them in my pockets, but we'll dump, we'll dump them out here. So for starters, I wear pants every day. I made a video recently called I, I wear the same pants every day. I think that was something, something like that. And I do wear the same pants pretty much every day. So if you're wondering what pants I wear every day, I made a video, I'll link it up here or here. I forget which side if I remember, uh, cause I carry everything in these pants because I love the pocket orientation. So if you wanna see how I carry these items in the pockets, like how I get it all in there and I don't carry that much, then watch that video. And then also, I guess the core foundation of an EDC system for me, uh, carrying a gun is a solid belt. So this is a belt uh, made by Blue Alpha Gear, some great dudes over there. And this is a Cobra, but it's kind of a unique Cobra belt. There are several companies out there making a similar variant of this, but it basically is a Cobra belt, but one of these sides is smaller. This side is smaller and it's smaller so it can fit through a bunch of belt loops, kind of your standard size belt loops that you'll find on most men's pants without needing to disassemble this whole thing. So you get the beauty that is a Cobra belt, easy on and off, my favorite wall, allowing it to fit through loops. I pretty much set this and forget this, the size, they come in a variety of colors. I actually partnered with them. So you can now buy the LLOD edition of this belt. I use this belt every day. Uh, I'll link to it. I'll link to everything down below, uh, the stuff I use every day and then it's kind of some stuff that I use here and there. So any of this stuff, it's gonna be all linked down below. But I sell that belt now because I partnered with them and I was like, I love this belt so much. People always ask me what belt I wear, can I just sell it on my site? So I sell it on my site, but they make it still. I don't make these belts, I just sell it for them. So pants and belt, pretty much the same one every day. But then we're gonna get into the gear that I actually carry in those pockets every day. All right, let's start with protection. I carry a Glock 19. This is my gun that I shoot more than any other gun. It's my favorite gun. I have a lot of really cool guns, but I always try to shoot my concealed carry gun from my concealed carry holster from concealment when I go shooting more than every other gun I have combined. I really wanna be a master of my EDC gun and my EDC gun is a modified Glock 19. All of the internals are stock, including the barrel, striker, trigger, everything internally is stock. I like to keep my carry gun stock, but as you can see, the outside is pretty modified. This was all done by Landers Weapon Solutions, an awesome dude and a friend of mine over there. Garrett does great work. He is a true artist with a gun. So he did the milling up top and he did the stippling down below, including the undercut. I like undercuts on my Glocks because it allows you to get a little bit of a higher grip. Uh, this is a Gen 4. I personally, my hands fit the finger grooves so well that I prefer leaving the finger grooves off, on. 
though a lot of times when you get these frames modified, people remove them because I think not everyone feels the way I feel about finger grooves. On the bottom here, I have a Magpul Magwell, which is very low profile, low cost, and works really well. I believe I did a whole video on the Magpul Magwell. I love them. All my mags are stock factory Glock mags. Up front, I have an Olight PL Mini. This is the one version uh, that's like not adjustable and is 400 lumens. Uh, it's a little more streamlined, but it's a little longer. I don't know. I'm, I'm comfortable with this light. I think the output's pretty good for what I use it for. They did release an Olight PL Mini 2, which is this guy. I believe I did a full video on it. And I am now making holsters for the Olight PL Mini 2, if you're wondering. But I just, I haven't actually made one for myself yet. I had a prototype one um, that's somewhere. But yeah, I've been carrying the PL Mini 1. It's magnetic rechargeable. I make and sell holsters. My PL Mini 1 and PL Mini 2 holster allows the light to be charged while it's in the holster, which is a really nice feature. What else on the gun? We have a coating up top. Uh, after you get your slides milled, you can get them painted if you want. And I just got this one painted, Cerakoted, which is just like a very hardcore paint, essentially baked on paint from Mad Custom Cerakote. Uh, this is their Mad Black Plus, which is super durable, a really nice, dark, deep finish. And then I have a Trijicon RMR up top. This is the RMO7, the 6.5 MOA. And then in the holster, like I said earlier, I make and sell holsters. This was actually the first holst, the first final prototype for the PL Mini when I first came out with this. So I've had this holster for a while. This is in multicam black. And then I have a extra backup. This is a Glock 17, 17 round mag. Orange on the back, just cause I kind of like it for visibility. These holsters are retention adjustable. And then I carry, people ask a lot of times, my carry ammo is 147 grain Federal HST uh, standard pressure, not plus P or anything. So that is just a really proven round that's gonna serve you well. So that's what I use for my gun. I'm realizing this video is gonna be pretty long, so forgive me for that. This has been a staple of my EDC for so long. It's the Leatherman Skeletool. This is kind of the CX version, but it has a special blade on it. I won't really talk about it because I don't think it's available anymore, but the Leatherman Skeletool CX is what I'd opt for. It has a little carbon fiber insert that I don't really care too much about, but it just seems to be a little bit higher quality than the regular Leatherman Skeletool, primarily, honestly, in the blade, and the blade steel is a little better, though again, doesn't really apply to this kind of special edition one that I've been carrying. I love pliers, I fix things, I tweak things, I work on things all the time, and granted, I have hundreds, if not thousands, of proper tools for the job. I find myself a lot of time just wrenching on something with the pliers that I have with me because it's quicker and it's easier. Also, this has a bottle cap opener, which I don't use all the time, but it does come in handy quite a bit. It's always nice to be the guy that can open bottles. Anytime there's a bottle that needs to be opened, somebody comes to me because they know I have this on me. Uh, though a lot of my friends, pretty much all my friends, I've converted to carrying Leatherman Skull Tools because they just love the utility that you get out of it. Then we also have a screwdriver bit here, it uses Leatherman bit kit you can get, and that allows you to interchange a bunch of these little bits in here. So you have one that you keep in the device, and then there's one more that's tucked away in here. So you can kind of pick and choose what you're going to use and put in there. And then it folds up, has a pocket clip, not the best pocket clip in the world, but it works. And then when you pull it out of your pocket, you have access to the blade, like a pocket knife. Again, not the best blade in the world. This is kind of a jack of all trades and master of none, but for opening boxes and kind of all the utility tasks that you plan on doing, this knife will serve you well. The Leatherman Skeletal, man, I can't, I can't recommend it enough. I get emails from people and comments from people all the time saying, man, you turned me onto the Leatherman Skeletal and it changed my life. Not sponsored by Leatherman, they don't pay me, they don't, I don't talk to anybody over there, but just I, I love their products. So the Skeletool, there's a lot of new Leathermans coming out, but none of them have dethroned the Skeletool. I mean, Gerber's haven't dethroned it, Sogs haven't dethroned it. I've tried all of the multi-tools out there and just 
the Skeletor keeps coming back. It's relatively small, relatively lightweight for what it is. Has just the right amount of tools, you know, it doesn't have as many tools as some of these other ones will feature, but usually on a multi-tool, I'm not using half of those tools anyways. So all of the tools that this have on it, I do use pretty regularly. And then I have a flashlight. This is a little bit changed. If you guys watch my EDC videos, it's a little bigger, but it is still an Olight. I carried around the S1 for a number of years, the S1R, the S1 Mini, the original S1, uh, Baton 2, and all the, every, all the S1s I carried for a number of years. Recently, I had some friends that carried around the S2s, like Talon, Sai, and Danny Choi, Gun DMC. They're like, I love the S2, and I was like, I'm gonna give it a shot. And they just liked the size of it. And the way that I carry this in the pocket in the Vertex Delta stretches, this fits in the pocket just as well as the S1 does, and really doesn't take much more bulk for how I carry it. So I switched over to the S2 R2 baton, which is what this is. Bumps the lumen output up just a little bit, battery life just a little bit, and fits in the hand well. The controls on this are all here. I do like a light that has a tactical tail switch. So sometimes, situation dependent, I will switch it out for like a Surefire or something that's just a little beefier and has a tail switch because I like the tactical applications of being able to tail switch and go to gun and have this light. This is more of a utility light than it is a tactical light but the one thing that this has that I just love so much that I can't get away from it is a magnetic tail cap. So this, I do a lot of car stuff, a lot of truck stuff, a lot of camping, a lot of just utility stuff and being able to just stick your light onto something metal and have it stick under your hood, outside, on your door and to have it illuminate something and basically go hands free. I love that feature, more lights need it. So this is magnetic, but it also has a magnetic charger, so you just slap it on there and charge it up, super easy. You don't have to plug anything in, you don't have to take the batteries out. Keeping this thing topped off is super easy. The pocket clip isn't the best in the world, but it's all right. It is the kind where you can, I don't know if I can get down here in frame, you could put it and you could use it like a headlamp if you want, so that is nice. And then the controls are all here. So this, and you hold it to cycle through the modes, the different brightness settings. You can double click it at any time to get into the ultra bright mode. You can triple click it to get into strobe, and then it will return to your previous setting unless it was on turbo or strobe. I think it will return to one of those if you do it relatively quickly, but then it will just return basically to whatever you had at last. So if you have it, I usually keep it on medium because it's kind of a nice utility setting. Uh, and then if I need to go to high, I'll double click it. So I'll keep it on medium and then when I turn it off, it has a memory so it returns back to your medium setting. The other feature that I love using, and it's definitely like a utility light feature, is the moonlight mode. So from off, you can just hold it, long press it, and then it comes on at this super low lumen mode. It's like one or three lumens or something. Uh, they call it moonlight, firefly, whatever. In any case, when it's pitch black and you wanna just get just enough light to see what you're doing without blinding yourself or killing your night vision, you can immediately access this mode no matter what. So I love moonlight mode, it's great light for camping. Anyway, this light has been solid. I haven't had any issues with O lights. They've been, they've been good performers. I haven't really had any issues with Surefires or Streamlights either, uh, but they're not making anything with a magnetic tail cap right now. So the O light has been my go-to for a long time just for the utility. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention, I think that the turbo mode is 1100 lumens. All, again, I'll link to all this stuff down below if you really care about the specs, but it's a uh, single 18650 battery inside of here. And you can also run two CR123Rs or CR123As, I believe, so rechargeables or just the standard lithiums. And that is that. It's like one of the smallest CR123 flashlight, or it's one of the smallest 18650 flashlights out there on the market. Anyway, great light. Another new thing that you guys will know is new because I've carried the Ridge Wallet for a number of years is this guy. This is a Trayvax. There has never been a wallet that has been so loved by people like the Trayvax. Anytime I do an EDC video, anytime I do a wallet video, people are always like, I love my Trayvax so much. And I've tried a handful of Trayvax wallets in the past, 
and none of them have dethroned my ridge until I tried this one, which is ironically the cheapest, <laughs> it's the cheapest Travax wall they have. I think this is like 20 bucks. Uh, they sent this out to me, they reached out and they're like, hey, do you wanna try any of our wallets? And I was like, ah, I've tried a couple in the past. And they're like, well, let us know if you wanna try any other one, we'll get one out to you. So they got this one out to me and a couple others and I tried them all. I tried the high-end ones and the low-end ones and a lot of people like different wallets. They have, a, they have an expansive line of wallets. For whatever reason, I'm a minimalist. This is their smallest one, and for me, it's their easiest one to use. So I primarily use one credit card. Accessing the one credit card on this is easier than any other wallet. It's just, it slides right out, and I have access to it. It's the easiest, fastest access wallet that I've ever tried. Sorry, this is kind of getting glare on you, so sorry if you're getting sick of that. I'll try and angle it this way. So fastest access to a single card of any wallet that I've ever tried, and I love that because I'm primarily only using one card. It's very easy to access the back card as well, just slide it out from the back. So super easy to access this card, super easy to access this card, so I keep my most access cards on the front and the back, and it's just, this is the easiest wallet that I've ever found to use. Uh, previously, I liked the Ridge because it was just simplistic and it was minimalistic and it was easy to use. But if you have a Ridge, you know it's kind of a little bit of a pain. Just it's it's very minor. They're still pretty easy to use, and I still like them. But this wallet's just uh, it's been so easy to use. And something about me just kind of likes the industrial metal and nylon band look and feel. They have a lot of. Uh, Walls that combine metal elements with leather elements, so those are really cool too. But this just, for ease of use, this this rocks my socks off. I love it. I wish it had like a bottle opener or something in here. It doesn't, it just kind of has this little uh, lanyard hole. Uh, and then you can adjust the strap here so it will adapt to a variety of card widths. I think I have five cards plus some cash. I keep my cash just in the middle, so I have like, two cards in front of it, and then I just keep the cash, I usually just keep like a 20 and a 10 maybe, just some emergency cash in there in case I need it. So that is my wallet, and I love it. This is the, I don't even remember what it is, I think it's called the Summit, I'll link it down below. And Travax did give me a coupon code, it's just LLOD. But yeah, I like Travax as a company, they do cool things, they're made in America, they seem like rad guys over there, they support content creators, you've probably seen them doing videos with Talon and Max Powell, so that's, you know, I, I like when companies uh, work with content creators because I am a content creator. So anyways, my experience with them have been rad just as a company, so so yeah, and this wallet's just minimal and easy to use, which are really the two things that I'm looking for in a wallet. And then you've probably seen it, I guess it's worth mentioning, uh, I'm using an Apple Watch. If you guys know me, you know I'm a hardcore Android fanboy. I've been using the Pixel since day one. I decided to try out uh, an iPhone. I had, I had an interesting opportunity, my Pixel, uh, started behaving funky and it was still under warranty so they sent they sent a replacement to me for free um, so I was like well I can sell this pixel and try out an iPhone so I actually bought a used iPhone 10 which is what this is not an XR or a XS or anything this is the 10 so it's a little bit old I had a 10 before when I tried iPhone before and just hated it and I still don't really like it but I do really love the Apple Watch, man. I love this thing. I love tech. Uh, I did put like a NATO style strap on it, so I'll link to that. I have the 44 millimeter. Uh, this is the Series 4. I really liked it. Anyways, I was able to basically sell my new Pixel 3 XL that they sent me and buy this kind of at a wash. So it was a good opportunity for me to try Apple again. I use an iPad, I use a MacBook Pro, so I'm kind of like in the ecosystem already, but I just always liked Android phones. But I have been using the iPhone. I can't say that I've been liking it. There are some features I like overall, I like Android more. But anyways, Apple Watch, iPhone. This is a case that I like a lot. Pretty minimal, but provides provides pretty good protection as well. I'll link to it too. And then yeah, my keys. My my Tacoma is just about done. I go and pick it up tomorrow. So right now, this is my Subaru key for my 04 Forester, which I got. You've probably seen it in the last couple of videos. I wanted a beater commuter car that could just get damaged by hail, could get dented, and I wouldn't really care about it. Uh, granted, I beat up my truck on the trail a lot uh, and scratched it up and everything, so it's like not necessarily a car that I try to keep nice, but I have been racking up the miles and I have 35 inch tires and expensive suspension components, and the fewer miles I can put on it, the better, honestly. 
Uh, so I just got this car, and also it's way faster, handles better. It's an all-wheel drive, so I can put snow tires on it, and it just it crushes the mountain roads where I live. But yeah, anyway, this I carry this every day, so it's part of my EDC. Look at this; looks so ghetto, though, doesn't it? it? Looks like like it's a toy. But anyway, yeah, keys, and I don't really carry any other keys regularly. I kind of have everything smart and. Uh, I have some other keys that I kind of keep stashed places if I really need them. But for the most part, I just either have my Tacoma fob or I have this fob and that's it. Okay, I think that's it. I said I was gonna talk about some extras. I wear these sunglasses, people see them a lot and they ask what they are. These are actually Magpul sunglasses. These are the Explorers. Magpul has a couple different sunglasses. These are the ones I like, they fit my face well and they're what I use. They have a couple different colors and a bunch of different lens, lens colors. They have a bigger version of this. This fits my smaller Asian face pretty well. Uh, has polarized lenses and they're kind of impact rated as well. So these sunglasses, I, I really like them. And they come with a free case actually too, a black one. So all of these sunglasses come with this case. And this case you can get standalone now and it's a great sunglasses case, among other things. So, yeah, Magpul sunglasses. I get asked all the time what my sunglasses are. This is what you'll usually see me wearing just because they fit really great. Uh, the clarity on the lenses is pretty good. The, they're impact resistant, so I can use them while I'm shooting. And I just think they look good. Uh, but again, that's gonna be preference. And then occasionally you see me review it. Recently, I carry the P365. I carried it for a while while I was prototyping this holster. This was actually the final prototype. Uh, so this is a prototype. This was the holster that I used to finalize my holsters. This is an LLOD Associate V2. Depending on the situation, rarely. I almost always carry my Glock 19, but sometimes when I need a really, really compact option, uh, the P365 is my favorite of, of the really tiny guns right now. So this is what I sometimes carry. You probably saw it more historically, but I carried a K-Bar TDI attached to my holster just on the side. Uh, so I'll sometimes carry a defensive blade, though not always and not often, honestly. But I have been kind of playing with some, some new ones. I get knives sent to me all the time. Uh, this is one from my friend Flagrant Beard, Dave over there, uh, great guy, great company. Uh, he sent me this out to play with for a while. It's called the Havoc. I've been really liking blades that have a finger hole just because they're easy to deploy. Just stick your finger and pull it right up and they're secure and you can kind of manipulate your firearm and stuff without losing your knife or dropping your knife. I never want to be in a, in a knife fight, honestly, like never, never, never. I will almost always, not that I have done this, but if given the opportunity, I will create space and shoot. I, my gun, I'm, I'm really good with my gun. Uh, I have a lot more training with my gun. I will always go to gun. There's like less variables for a gunfight for me because I could kill somebody very efficiently. Knife fights are ugly, but if I do get into a knife fight and it's kind of fist fight, knife fight, I want to be sure that I don't lose my knife. That's why I love these ring things. There's a lot of people like, you're gonna break a finger, blah, 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 blah. But I think the, the pros outweigh the cons for me personally for what little knife training I have. I love these. So I've been kind of, I've been kind of checking out uh, some knives that have this. There's a couple others I have. There's some that I have on the way. This is another one that's even smaller. I love how small and light this knife is. It would go great attached to my holster, and I like knives that I can use with my left hand because if I need to go to gun, I have my right hand. Uh, or if my gun hand is wrestling or something, or I'm, I'm close, I'm already in close combat, I can use my left hand to get a knife out to create distance then to get my gun out. So for a defensive blade, I like left hand access, that's my primary, because if I have my right hand available, I'm gonna go to gun. Almost all, if it's, if it's close, almost always I'm just gonna go to gun, uh, because it's, it's just, it's a more powerful tool. So if I can go to gun and I have my right hand, I'm gonna go to gun. Left hand, I'm gonna go to knife. Left hand, while I can go, I do train offhand stuff. I, I train getting my gun out with my right hand uh, theoretically injured or whatever. But left hand, if my right hand is is preoccupied with something else, then I like being able to go to knife. This is a little bit different. There's a few knives out there that have this where you actually go for the middle finger through 
And then that way you have even more dexterity with your left hand, with your knife hand, without dropping this. So I can reload a mag, I can get my flashlight out, I can do pick up, open a door, whatever, and, and this stays put. Also, when you're kind of taking, I'm, I'm right-handed, so this would be my fighting kind of stance, I can keep this out in front of me, hands up, protecting my face, and I have a blade between me and them, so that if they come at me, if they swing at me, if they do whatever, I have this blade, I can do go a nice jab, I can do a slice, I just, for me, it makes a ton of logical sense having a layout like this, if I'm just gonna be boxing or whatever, if I'm gonna be grappling, if I'm gonna be going for my gun, just, I love these setups. So I, I'm, I'm really into knives like this right now. Uh, again, I'll link some options that I think are really pretty cool. This is, this is one of them. The sheath is kind of iffy, but at least it does come with a sheath. Uh, the belt clip, you can kind of do a variety of ways. It does have holes, so if you want to attach this to a holster or something like mine, uh, you could do it. It's not a perfect setup. I probably would get a heat gun and kind of bend this a little bit in such a way to, to make it an ideal companion to a holster. Basically, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, let's talk folders for a little bit. Uh, I love knives. <laughs> Another use. I have these actually in like a case upstairs, but I put them in this to, to bring them downstairs to my video. So let's go through some of my favorite knives. This is probably my favorite just EDC knife of all time. It's a ZT Sinkovich. Sinkovich? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. But it's a ZT and it's one of their smaller ones. ZTs are super smooth. It's just the smoothest deploying, super fast deployment. Uh, S35 VN steel, so really nice. Carbon fiber uh, handle on this side and titanium on this side. Uh, the pocket clip's not the best. I actually ordered a deep carry pocket clip for this like two months ago and haven't gotten it yet. But this is probably my overall favorite. Uh, it's like 200-ish, I think, depending on the price fluctuation. So it's what most people would consider kind of a higher end knife, but for knife people, probably it's more of a middle end knife. For me, it's kind of on the higher end. Uh, so not for everybody, but Probably my favorite knife, just because it's light, easy to open, carries really well for how thin it is, and I think it looks looks good. Has a little bit of fun back here with the green anodized spacers. A newer knife I got, which falls into kind of the middle range, I guess. Some people might consider it on the low end, and some people might consider it on the high end, but it's about 100 bucks. This one's from Gerber. It doesn't feel as good as this. Granted, it's half the price, so I don't think it should feel as good. It has anodized uh, aluminum scales or handles. Uh, it is a liner lock. And the blade is S30V, so pretty good blade. Made in the USA from Gerber, good warranty. Uh, and it's not an assisted opener, though it does have a pretty good detent that takes quite a bit of pressure, honestly, in mind to deploy. But the thing I love about this knife, I think it looks pretty good, um, but is the Warncliffe blade. I'm a big fan of Warncliffe blades. Uh, usually they're pretty big. Sorry, I have some, some gunk on here. I've been using this kind of as utility knife. But Warncliffe blades, I love just the tip. I love the tip because it's, you can do some fine work with tip. Uh, I, I think they look cool, but Warncliffe's are typically thicker. This is kind of a thinner kind of a Warncliffe blade, uh, and I like it because it allows the knife to be thin, which allows it to carry nicely. This is very similar in size to this ZT. Uh, they have this in a couple of colors. This is like a sage, I think. I like it a lot. Uh, again, it, it feels pretty good. You can see it kind of is getting a little bit worn here. And I kind of like that. I like when a, look, when a knife gets a little bit worn. Uh, but anyways, this is another pretty good option for 100 bucks. I like that it's small and it carries well. This is kind of a legendary knife, the uh, PM2 by Spyderco, another American-made knife, another S30V blade. Uh, they have these holes so you can kind of open them in cool ways, flip them out, spidey flip people call it. Uh, and it has a compression lock on the back, which isn't technically a reverse liner lock, but kind of uh, it kind of functions in use like a reverse liner lock. So you can use this to open it, you can kind of just close it like that. I really like this compression lock a lot and 
I really just like Spydercos. They are big. There's a PM3 that I kind of want to check out that's like kind of a smaller version of this. This is a limited edition one. I had a black one that was pretty beat up. Uh, I took the clip off of it, so it's a deep carry clip on this knife. But this is just kind of, it's it's an awesome knife. I'll take this camping and stuff a lot of times, but I don't, it's just a little bit big for me to want to EDC since I'm already carrying a skeletal. A lot of times I'll just carry the skeletal, but sometimes I'll toss an extra knife in just to play with because I, you know, everyone likes flipping out knives um, for fun. Another knife that is far cheaper, but surprisingly made in the US as well, is this Kershaw. It's a Skyline, another pretty popular knife. Uh, in the realm, but it kind of fits the same category, similar size, carries really well, really comfortably, uh, carries in a pocket with other stuff in there pretty nicely, uh, and just opens nice, kind of fun to open, standard liner lock, I believe they're G10 scales as well, so you get a lot of bang for your buck with this cheaper knife, uh, and it is nice that it's made in the US, you'll get a lower quality steel, and it's not quite as smooth, but for just a knife that carries well and has a lot of utility and you're not too worried about breaking it or losing it or whatever, uh, the Kershaw Skyline's really good. I don't have it in front of me, but also like the Kershaw Leak, another made in the US knife, another relatively affordable knife that has a lot of usability, but this probably would hold up to use a little better than the Leak. The Leak's a little more of a delicate knife. Yeah, so these are probably my favorite just kind of folder knife options right now. I like them all kind of for different reasons. Honestly, like a good all around median price point one is this one here, the Gerber. It's a new knife. Uh, I bought it when it just came out and mostly I just really like the blade shape. It's fun to open and close. I think it looks good. It has a good steel without breaking the bank too much and it's made in the US. So kind of a good all around knife I would say is this one. Again, it's not gonna be as good as your kind of high end made in America knives or even made otherwhere knives as well, but you know, it's kind of a it's kind of a pretty good balance. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I love EDC videos. I think the well, like when I first started getting into YouTube and like first kind of started watching these random videos for like longer extended period of time, there were EDC videos. I think that's kind of like what I started on watching on YouTube. And there's just something about like seeing the gear that other people carry that I don't know. I, I find fun. And that's why I kind of do my truck. So I, I have a truck, I have a Tacoma, and I do the EDC of my truck as well. So if you're into like EDC on steroids, you can watch what I everyday carry in my truck. And then, oh, I also, I made a video a while back on EDC. What What's my EDC bag, my laptop bag? This is a Vertex Gamut, my favorite bag that I've ever owned of any backpack. Um, so I did one last year and I think I'm, people have been asking me to do another one, so I'll probably do another one soon. But that video's on my channel as well. Vertex, I love their bags. They're coming out with some new bags. I have a coupon code over there actually, LLOD. Those four letters will save you 25% off of anything at vertex.com. But if you wanna see me do kind of like an EDC bag update, let me know and I'll kind of prioritize that. I try to always listen to the comments, so a lot of the comments kind of dictate my future videos, so I always love hearing from you guys. Oh, one more announcement. Uh, if you're watching this like right away, I'm having a meetup on Monday, so I'm gonna try and release this video on Friday, and then I'm gonna have a meetup on Monday, the 13th, May 13th, I think. So if you're in the Denver area, I'll put meetup information down below. Come and hang out with me. I just got my truck wrapped in multicam black. So you'll probably want to check that out because it's fun. I think that's I think that's it. I'm gonna be at Overland Expo as well next week. So May 17th or whatever. So if you're gonna be there, hit me up, come say hi. Uh, maybe I'll bring around some swag and patches and stuff. So if you see me and you want something, uh, ask me and then I'll fish it out of my backpack. All right, as always guys, thanks for, thanks for watching till the end. If you found this video fun, helpful, informative, any of those things, hit that thumbs up button. It always helps. Comment down below. Get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. And of course, if you are gonna be subscribed, hit that notification icon. Check out these videos right when they release. A lot of times I interact a little more, it's a li little easier for me to interact with the comments when I just release a video. So if you want some feedback from myself and others, notification squad's a great way to do that. All right, oh, also, I have a Patreon. I do giveaways on Patreon every month for my 556 level. So uh, Trayvax, I think I mentioned it earlier. 
It's gonna donate some stuff. I always have donations from all the companies I work with, so gonna be some rad stuff. I'm giving away a Vertex bag every month for the next like five months too. So, all right, all right, I've been talking so long. Take care, guys.